Another example is magnesium. So one of the ways that magnesium can help with neurogenic inflammation is because one of the ways that neurogenic inflammation gets propagated or continues after it has already been started is because of muscular tension, myofascial tension that continues to mildly compress on the peripheral nerves, which our brain can then perceive as painful. Magnesium can help to relax muscles over time. And so we know that magnesium tends to help patients with neurogenic inflammation. Now, again, a small portion of people might notice some kind of short-term benefits from the magnesium. They take a nice dose of magnesium. We like using a, a slow-release magnesium called MAG-SRT. It is easier on the gut, meaning it doesn't cause as much osmotic diarrhea, which is not fun to deal with. And so we actually get better magnesium levels and improvements because of that. Let's say somebody takes that and a small percentage of people might notice improvement in that kind of hour in their pain, but not everybody does. Now for the people where it doesn't, generally with that, we're looking at about three months for the magnesium supplementation for us to really assess if it was helpful. And so if we only do this for two weeks and go, ah, I take it and I'm not getting any better, well, two weeks might be a little too short of a time and we might actually need to give it a longer period of time. Now again, if you're on it for three months and you're like, there's no difference in my pain, then you can have the discussion with your doctor about coming off that. The interesting thing about magnesium is that a lot of people see other positive benefits with magnesium, even if their pain doesn't improve. And so some people will oops, continue to take that. Mm -hmm.